Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of iPrint 3D and today we're talking about Lychee Mastery and specifically we're talking about supporting and maintaining little, delicate, fragile, offhang, you know, overhang bits that are just annoying when you're doing 3D printing. This head, for example, whether or not this is your thing or, you know, something else is your thing. I know sometimes a lot of models come with different hair pieces, bangs, little tiny bits like that, that you can honestly support with a couple of supports. But, I mean, even then, sometimes you just got to be really careful. They can be as thick as a support. Uh, so generally, there just in lies a, a bit of an issue either. You got to make sure that you put enough supporting there so it's supported, but you don't want to put too much that you're going to have an issue breaking it free. So anyway, we're going to take a look at the head first. And honestly, just by changing its orientation, I'm going to show you we're going to shave off about 20 islands because I just tilted a little too far originally. And then we'll check those islands and come right back. <clears throat> and there we go, 83 instead of like 104. So that's better. But generally speaking, something like this, it has a lot of texture tends to have a lot of islands anyway because each the you know those little textures are just going to cause um islanding because of their you know texture uh, it's just just generally an issue with with that kind of stuff so what you want to do generally speaking is you want to take your light light supports or your medium light supports in this case i'm using my medium lights um because i've changed out my settings more frequently um with the newer updates of lychee um i've adjusted my medium and my light a little bit and um it's working okay this way. I'm, I'm kind of modulating between the two, but uh, my lights go down just a little bit more than this by like 0 0.02, but uh, it does make a little bit of a difference when it comes to breakdown. Now on the earrings and stuff, I'm just using standard lights. I'm using standard bars with, you know, just a uh, mini tree set up there with some minis. I'm not doing any cones on the minis, just doing some standard poles, uh, just a little rod connector to the bar tip. And that is usually enough to hold an object that is that small. It doesn't have a lot of mass, doesn't have a lot of pullback. You can additionally add some additional supports around the edge there, but I don't suggest putting too many bars on the bottom because that's just going to make it difficult to pull away when it's time for you to remove those supports and you may break the earring off. Um, and these are little fragile parts, so when you do go to break the supports off, this is something you probably want to try and use clippers with anyway. Um, just to try to avoid any uh, damage to the earring itself. And this will, you know, generally give you a much better time than if you just try to pull them off. Now, if you do your supporting right, you should be able to pull them off as long as you're gentle enough about it and you don't tug too much. You can just kind of pull them away and they will strip away from the piece. Now, I tend to try to do both sides as similar as possible, but I'm just going to give you a few examples of how you can do different parts of this model as we kind of cut through the different parts of it. Now, in this play, in this part here, I'm just going over the earrings, and then eventually we're going to cut around to the back where we do uh, the feathers and stuff like that. Right now, all we're focusing on is islands, and we're doing some basic supporting. And I'll go over that as well as we get to the basic supporting as I start to put it on um, the, the other parts of the model. Now, this is just one of the few pieces that I am going to show you all today. There's a couple of other ones. There's actually literally a hair piece. Um, there's a little tiny ribbon. And then I have um, uh, an arm because fingers always tend to be an issue for some folks. Now, these are pretty big fingers because it's a decently scaled arm and hand. But it is still something that um, people can still tend to break a finger off. It is still one of those points that does tend to be fragile in some cases. And you could, could wind up having issues with it. Um, ears like this one can also be an issue where you snap the tip off. So just make sure not to over support these things as to ensure that they are supported enough, but they don't have too much support where when you go to pull the supports off, you're snapping the end of the ear off. Now the ear on the other side of her head is kind of intercoiled into the hair, which gives it a little bit more support on its own and doesn't really need as much of a support system underneath it as the other one since that one is kind of freestanding. We're going to want to go ahead and put a support system on the bottom of the neck and I usually do this pretty much like a base since it's round and that's the connector point where that's going to connect to the next seam. I want to make sure that this has a good connection since usually it's skin to skin. Now in her case this actually has like a little collar or something that she's wearing so we're going to be using my heavies or medium heavies in this case because they're really not that heavy as I haven't had 
really much use for using anything heavier than this in a long time. And I know my descriptions of my videos actually contradict this because those are my original heavy settings and I'm going to update that in a couple videos once I confirm that these settings are good for me all, all the way around. I haven't tested this on a bunch of prints yet. This is just me kind of playing around with changing my settings and using the um, different versions for light, medium, heavy that I'm considering. Now, if I do find that I do have a need for some of the heavy stuff in the future, I'll probably just make that another preset that I can uh, select aside from the main three, since you can create additional presets um, in your supporting system. So that is an option. As you can see here, I tried to create a, like a little uniform ring around the neck that will help support that as it builds. And then I also try to put some additional supports through uh, some of the material underneath the neck as well. So that kind of gives it some balance and will hopefully make that material come out nice and smooth. Uh, you're going to want to make sure and focus on any yellow zones on the model or if you're using the new toggles, they're going to be red now for you. Um, I'm still sticking with the yellow and uh, sorry, yellow and orange kind of checkerboard thing. And yes, as you can tell, I have turned off the white outline. I know a lot of folks don't really like the white outline too much. Um, and for me, it was okay for a second. But honestly, I think after a while, it kind of got jarring on my eyes. And um, I just turned it off. It, it's not a big deal. Some people probably like it. Other people are not going to like it. But I think that's the same with any kind of visual overhaul or change. Uh, that get made that gets made to software anyway we're going to finish up supporting most of this i'm not going to finish it entirely i'm we're going to leave a few islands and stuff like that because i want to move on to other pieces and i don't want to spend the entire video working on her so i'm probably going to speed this up a little bit finish supporting what i can for this to give you an example of how this is done um, and then we're going to move on to some other more delicate parts we'll be right back All right, let's go ahead and get this one out of here and uh, let's get started on another part so we can show you guys the difference. Now, there's a few different ways you could orient this. You could <clears throat> lay it down flat or lay it at an angle, kind of flat with the hair flowing forward. Uh, I choose to lay it this way with the down, with the hair texture down and the 
uh, hangy bits kind of going up. The reason I do that is because it creates far less islands on the way on this direction than it does in the other direction. Um, so orientation saves this one as well. Now you can do it the other way. You can lay it down. You can kind of lay it at an angle so that way you're doing more support work on the interior of the head and less on the top. Uh, but I do this because it gives me a nice chunk of material to hold on to. And honestly, it's just the top of the front of the bangs. You just do a little sanding. Those little nubs will come right off. You're fine. Um, so this is a good place to do it. Now, again, just support your islands. Put your supports where they need to be. Uh, support your, you know, angled zones that are going to be in need of more supporting. And make sure you use the lightest support you have. Um, like on this side here, I, I was going to use some mini supports, but then the angle that they're hitting, they're actually really, really close because it's a weird angle. So I don't like that. It's kind of like hitting some of the geometry on the side. So I actually opted for just sticking a bunch of smaller supports there at kind of like off, off from each other. And you'll see what I mean in just a second because I'm... I decided against this. I was like, eh, this isn't working. So I did away with these, and then I started uh, creating a different support structure here. But, again, when you're working with delicate parts, sometimes there is going to be a trial and error. Sometimes you aren't going to get it right the first time. When that happens, just take note of where the failure was. You know, if it was a pancake, take notice of what it was that pancaked. Uh, don't go crazy and over-support the rest of the whole model just because one part had a fail. That is when you're going to create more trouble when it's time to remove the supporting later. So just remember, removing the supporting is just as important as getting the print to succeed. And while I do think it is okay to use clippers and stuff like that to remove your supports, which is usually fine... The delicate parts can still break even with the use of a clipper because the clipper can apply pressure on both ends and then pop, something breaks because it's just being pushed too much in one direction or the other. So that being the case, that is something you still need to consider. Um, again, with something like this, tenderly stuff like hair, just put the supports where they need to be. Always make sure to put supports on some of the highest points as well because uh, you don't want the rest of this just counting on what's below it. So always make sure that you have some supports kind of leading up the model. Even if it's small, just make sure that they're further spread apart and that they're light. So that way they're not going to do any damage and they're not going to pull on the model too much. And you're not going to wind up with too many additional issues when you go to remove these supports. Now, of course, that cluster supports there on the tips of the hair, they, they're kind of like weird out there on their own. So um, creating some other structure that's going to be near them or something you can brace them to will also be handy um, to make sure that they themselves actually have enough um, strength to handle the entire printing process. So you got to still treat it like it's a print and you definitely need to survive, but you also need to make sure that you don't over support the part because it's going to get lost in a sea of supports and then the fragile bits are just, are they're going to snap off from the, the amount of pressure that's going to be applied uh, unless you're extremely careful and you clip out each one little tiny bit by tiny bit, making sure not to overclip or push on anything like the model or anything like that with the clipper. So, again, um, you need to make sure it's done just right. There is a finesse level there. <clears throat> and just to make things more fun, here's something even smaller. Yes, it's a ribbon. And yeah, it only has one island because the darn thing is so small, it's the only island on it so far. Um, and then the rest of it will build up from there. So it's actually a pretty good shape for the print purpose. And, you know, I mean, I could be crazy and say you could probably print this thing with about 20 supports. Maybe less. Uh, and I'll show y'all. Because this part is so small. It's so stringy. It's so light. There's nothing to it. There really isn't anything going on. What you just need to make sure is that you orientate parts like this properly. So if it's a stringy bit and it's got strings on it, turn it upside down and make sure that the strings are pointing upwards. And don't really apply too much support to them at all. Um, if it's something like this, like a ribbon or a bow, make sure again you point the, the tassels of the ribbon or bow or the, the ends of the ribbon or bow upwards. Don't use those as a support because they're not strong enough. 
This is weak material. I mean, look at the ends of that ribbon and look at the support stick that's sitting next to it. The support sticks are actually about the same size, if not thicker, than the actual um, size of the material. And that, those little bits there, are very, very thin. So you don't really have a lot of material there to pull away from um, when you're doing clipping, cutting, or even pulling. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing any pulling on a part like this because you're just going to snap it in half. Um, but if you go in there with some clippers and just clip off all the ends, this thing should just fall right off. So again, when you're doing something this delicate, like a ribbon or bow or, or a rope or something like that, that is the, um, the key. And moving on to our last type of part for now we're discussing is a hand and an arm. And mostly really we're just here to talk about the hand because fingers are problems. People do tend to have this issue with fingers. They're, they're some of the most broken parts on models for some reason. And I've definitely had a few in my past where the fingers were definitely a breaking point and the model wound up, you know, I wound up breaking a finger and then I either had to try to put it back on or, you know, I just wind up printing a new arm in some cases because the finger doesn't go on right or it gets wonky and looks crooked. <clears throat> and so I kind of move on from it. But um, you want to make sure you support the bottom of the arm in this case and, and make sure that it's a nice, solid, good support on the bottom because that is going to be the most important aspect of the arm itself. Now, when we take a look at the hand, the orientation here kind of matters really uh, a lot as well. And I'm going to put a support at the tip or right below the fingernail of each one of these fingers, even though I don't think there's actually a fingernail textured on there. Where the fingernail would be, it's going to, I'm going to put one support underneath each one of those uh, tips of the finger. Then I'm going to go ahead and layer out some additional supports, some of which I'm going to use support painter because you can kind of go nuts and... Um, freehand some of this stuff and then some of the other ones I'm just going to pop in one at a time and what we're doing essentially is creating the support cradle for the hand itself and right now I'm using my medium light which is a little bit heavier than a light light but it is not as heavy as a full light so this has a lot less uh, pull and a lot more give as far as that goes and I'm pretty sure that um, it's one of the yeah it's it's a, anyways it's it's a, it's a way that seems to work the best when it comes to that type of um, uh, part and orientation needs so uh, like I said fingers break and uh, if you do them with uh, supports at the tips of the fingers like that right under the fingernail and then you kind of um, layer supports up and down the, the back of the hand like I just did there you have far less pressure happening where the fingers are in general and then you can go in there with a clipper and you can just kind of clip off the tips of those as they touch the fingers and you have to, don't have to worry about breaking off a single finger. And just make sure that the rest of the arm is supported well enough and that all the pressure isn't going to be applied to those fingertips when it gets to the fingers. Um, so make sure that there are some other supports throughout the arm, otherwise you will have other problems with the arm itself just generally not succeeding because of just, you know, just not being supported well enough. Um, now again, don't be afraid to use the support painter. Don't don't be afraid to freehand stuff from time to time if you want to make things go faster. Your supporting doesn't always have to be super pretty, although a lot of people do prefer if you try to keep the support lines pretty. So if you are looking for that, that is, you know, you can take your time and do one little step at a time, or you can use some of the tools that are provided. Pretty much that is it though for this particular episode. I hope you all got something good out of this. Um, uh, like I said, we didn't completely support any of these parts 100%, but I did, well, maybe the ribbon. For the most part, what I'm giving you here is kind of like a starting idea. Since you're not necessarily working with the same models as me, I think it's a good example to show you kind of the different types of parts that you can run into that you might need to be a little delicate with. Anyway, again, I hope you all learned something from this episode. I hope it was good. If so, please leave a comment, hit that like button, and don't forget to ring the bell if you want notifications on episodes that we produce, which is usually about once or twice a week, and they're varying in content from this type of stuff to painting and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, see you all very soon, and thank you so much for watching.